Penny Wong, thanks so much for your time. This is such a, a volatile time, it seems, right now with the China relationship off the back of a couple of explosive claims of foreign interference. Do you think that Australia needs a strategic council, as Richard Miles suggested yesterday, a bipartisan strategic council? I certainly think, and I've been calling for some time, for a stronger bipartisan focus in the relationship and bipartisan engagement, a parliamentary engagement. As you might call, recall, I've asked the Foreign Minister for briefings for the Parliament because I think it would be beneficial. In terms of a strategic council, Richard, that's an idea Richard's been floating for some time and obviously it's one of the ideas we'll consider in our policy phase as we lead up to the election. <laughs> Yeah, but it's consistent with the, the view I've taken and that Labor does take, that we do need better engagement from uh, the Parliament when it comes to dealing with this relationship. And is it, is it better if there is everyone's off the same song sheet, basically, on this relationship as well? well? This is a complex and consequential relationship and it is in a new phase. It's in a phase where we have to manage the differences which arise from the fact that we are a democracy and China is not. But we have to continue to engage. So the question for uh, the country is how do we best do that? What I believe uh, and I think Australians would welcome would be the government leading this discussion. Uh, unfortunately too much of it is being led by backbenchers, or the media, and obviously the media are, it's important the media report these issues, uh, but the policy response and the, the framing of the response needs to be led by the government. I'd encourage them to do that and to bring the parliament with them in that process. And in terms of how to do that, what is the message to Beijing? Because obviously I think the message you need to push back against yes, attempts the to interfere. Yes, the message to Beijing is we, we, we recognise China's importance to Australia, the region and the world. Uh, we will engage. We want to engage with you, in, with you, but our engagement will be in a manner that safeguards our sovereignty and our democracy. We will safeguard our democracy and our sovereignty. In terms of doing that, though, is it is it possible to maintain a healthy trading relationship while pushing back against some of their attempts to well, to interfere? That that, that is. The challenge, but it's a challenge we have to find a way through because disengagement from China uh, isn't realistic. I mean, China is going to be the world's largest economy. Uh, China will influence the shape of our region. So we, we do need uh, to engage uh, with China in a way that reflects our interests, whether that is our economic interests or our interests in terms of our democracy and our sovereignty. And I'd, but I'd also make the point, I think this is as much about the sort of region we want as the bilateral relationship. Uh, we want a multipolar region. We want a region where the, the Americans are constructively engaged. We want a region where ASEAN uh, is, uh, continues uh, to be central. And we want a region uh, which is rules-based, where there are rules to guide behaviour and to manage disputes. So we need to work not just in the bilateral relationship but in our relationships with Indonesia and, other, and India and other nations of the region to continue to bolster and buttress the region we want. When, it looks, when you look to China and uh, Peter Harcher in his quarterly essay says that they are now seeking to gain as much power as they can over Australia. Why, why is that, do you think? I, I think you know, great powers do what great powers do. They assert their interests. Uh, but we're not without our agency. And, and substantial powers, middle powers, are not without our agency. And we're one such power and we need to assert our interests and work strategically and intelligently with other nations of the region uh, to continue to advocate for and protect our interests. Well, we have a lot of nations with like-minded interests, like Korea, like Japan, like Singapore. Um, are, you, are you thinking along the lines of, say, a, a Hugh White idea of an Asia Asia grouping to work together? Oh, well, I, I think we, we do do that through, through um, you know, our, our, the Indo-Pacific strategy and I think we should continue to invest and engage very closely with our region. I recently went uh, to Indonesia, Malaysia and Vietnam uh, and I did so because ASEAN, as the fulcrum, as the centre of mm. the region, is so important and what we need to continue to advocate for and what we need to continue to work for is partnerships that ensure we have the sort of region we want. And finally, on the ensuring integrity mm. bill, is it, is it time that Labor accepts some tougher rules on the unions if it does have to go via a court for, for judgment? <laughs> I have to say, that, you know, the, the hypocrisy of a government that says 23 million breaches of federal law uh, which is what Westpac has engaged in, is a matter for the board to manage in terms of the leadership of Westpac. That's what the Prime Minister said. 
but the leadership of unions representing nurses and midwives is a matter that the parliament can, can regulate and can, can be taken away for paperwork breaches. I mean, this is an ideological attack on working people uh, and working people's representatives. And what if it has to go via a judge, though, well, if a judge talks about the gravity of any breach? Yeah, I, I, I think that there are already uh, ways in which these matters can be dealt with. This is about undermining the, and weakening the capacity of trade unions to, to advocate on behalf of their members. It's very clear. It's the same ideology as work choices. Penny Wong, I appreciate your time as always. Thanks. Good to be with you.